Dear Heavenly Father, give thanks for another day of life. I ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us. I ask your Holy Spirit to help me present in a way that is clear the overview of some of the things which I have presented here since I've been here at this here um, venue. And I pray that uh, it be according to your will, Father, and that it be light that sheds um, a light in the path to your soon coming. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to start with an overview um, of what I've done, but um, I've spoke to Larry recently and he asked me to just put things, basic things of what we've been doing um, concerning dates and, and numbers and relating them together. Justifi justification for dropping the letter sorry, the number zero um, in some of our applications as well. Um, if, if we look at the date, the 22nd of October, 1844, we understand that there's uh, the 2520 ends at this here date, and there's a 2300 days also ends at this here date. And with this here, between, the number between these here, is 220. On October the 22nd uh, can be read as the 10th month and the 22nd day and if you um, multiply them 10 by 22 it's 220. We understand in the 1844 this was the 10th day of the 7th month. If you take the 7th month as a month being uh, 30 days and multiply it by 7 plus uh, that comes to 210, plus the 10 days is 220. So you just uh, have like a symbolism here. We're just having a connection with numbers. This is just uh, sort of the basics of what we're understanding. God is opening up to us and how to, to understand a lot of the, the correlation between numbers and dates. Um, dropping the, the zero, sometimes we do that there. We, we see in Matthew 10, there's a 12 and a 70. Jesus sends out 12 disciples and then follows that by sending out 70 disciples. In Acts chapter 2, there's 120 in the upper room. And in Acts chapter 6, it's followed by uh, seven deacons um, are added um, or emphasized uh, to the church as well in that time period. And so that you have another zero to the twelve and a, a, a zero off the seven there. In First Kings 18 and 19, uh, Elijah has, makes a, an altar with twelve stones, and then um, he's told that there's uh, seven thousand in Israel that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. And just in a general 19-year period, uh, the Hebrews would have twelve of them years being of twelve months. And seven of those years would have an extra month. So you have about 12-7 uh, in that sort of picture there. And then the first day of the first month, the first day of the fifth month, prophetically there's 120 days. And then there's another 70 days until the 10th day of the seventh month. And Jacob, he had 12 sons. And then when he went to Joseph um, uh, during the second year of the famine, he went, there was, uh, the Bible says there was... 70 of them. also says there was 75 in another verse, but you have a 12 and a 70 there. <coughs> in 2016, uh, we are understanding, uh, we were looking at midnight, and we were looking at Noah, and we understand that midway, Elmite says in great controversy, that midway between when they thought Christ would come and when the 2300 days were due to terminate, um, the midnight cry message was given, Behold, bridegroom cometh. And uh, we had a study here in 2016, and I suggest it with Noah. Um, we have a shut door which represents the October 22nd, the 10th day of the 7th month, and Noah was 600, but there was 120 years uh, given to men. Um, and you read in Genesis chapter 6, and we understand that was around the time when Noah found grace and was to build the ark. And Noah would have been 480, 
at that there time, if you go midway between 480 and six, when the time when Noah was 600, when the flood came, he was uh, 540 years old, which connects to midway being the fifth day of the fourth month. When I suggested this, it was kind of new and people thought it was funny, they laughed at it, and uh, I didn't really. Uh, was well, something I just suggested at the time. I didn't really know if it were, could be have any weight to it. And I went to a camp meeting in Holland in two, at the end of the 2016, and someone asked me about this here. Is, is this valid? And I said, I, I'm not sure. I've just kind of suggested it. But then when, it, when we came to study Samuel Snow's letters, we found this here uh, correlation with the, with the, a, a year or a, a date and a, a number. Of, no, like a number of 54 with the day, fifth day of the fourth month. And um, so this is, when we look at Samuel Snow's letters, this is prime midnight cry uh, location for us at the end of the world because this is, uh, oh, this is the history that repeats and uh, God has opened this year up to us as, so we could see his footprints, his methods of how uh, we're understanding these correlations between numbers and dates. This is just some of the, the letters. I'm just taking a, a sample of them. There's, there's other letters that come before this. <coughs> so when, um, this is the first day of the first month, uh, April 19. And this would be it's 187 days to October the 22nd. Yeah. That's the 10th day of the seventh month. And on 187, we can take to be a symbol of the 18th day of the seventh month. And that was the, the date of Samuel Snow's last letter, his fourth letter. And so July 18, it's part of the midnight cry period in 1844. And we're finding it has significance for us uh, today, the July 18, and particularly uh, the year 2020. <coughs> Samuel Snow, second letter. I think it was published, or it's either published or wrote, I can't, I'm not sure, I'll have to look at it again, but uh, on the 14th day of the first month, which is Passover. And in this here letter, he talks about Christ being crucified in the midst of the week and connecting it to the year AD 31. So it has a lot of uh, Passover uh, symbology to it as well. We're just seeing God's footprints in this here history through these letters. And it's uh, 54 days from that, at, um, from the 2nd of May to the 22nd of June, which was uh, the date when he wrote his third letter. And that was the sixth day of the third month, which was Pentecost. And there's a 50 to 4 day period between that. And again, we can connect that with the fifth day of the fourth month when he's going to be presenting the Midnight Cry message in Boston. And then it's another 54 days from the 22nd of June to August 15, where he uh, gives the midnight cry message at the Exeter camp meeting. So another, it's like midway. This, we're counting this here, this is 107 days in total. Uh, we count 54 this way and then 54 this, that way, so this year date gets counted twice. And 107, therefore, is uh, representing the 10th day of the seventh month, which points to here, uh, the close of probation in October 22. And this here, 187 days from the first day of the first month to October 22, the 10th day of the seventh month, can also be divided. Um, well, this is, we've recognized it's 94 days at either side, counting the 21st of July, and the night, this would be representing the ninth day of the fourth month. We find this in Jeremiah 39, verse 2, where this it talks about on the ninth day of the fourth month that the, the city is broken. And uh, this is relating to 586 BC and the, the uh, destruction of the city and, and the temple, which is, which the temple finally gets destroyed in the 10th day of the 5th month as well. So that's just like a, a general overview of what we're doing with numbers and their importance to us. Um, 
with what uh, with the midnight cry period of of, of the that we're uh, now in. The ninth day of the fourth month, you find in Jeremiah 39, verse 2. So he's asking, he's asking what was the, the ninth day of the fourth month, and that's when the city was broken. The siege already um, had been taking place for nearly over a year, for a but a year and six months. But a year, but a year and five months. Oh, sorry. Jeremiah. Two. Okay. Um, and in the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up. Okay. Thank you. So that's just a, a basic introduction to, to the to what we're doing here. Um, my first presentation, I dealt with November nine in Millerite history, and. We could identify November 9th uh, in that history as being uh, a close of probation. Um, I'd done a study where I, I took the days, I found out the days, um, how many days Christ was in the holy place. Um, you can do this using online date calculators. From Pentecost in AD 31, to when he finished in the, in the holy place and went into the most holy place on October the 22nd, 1844. We can calculate it as six, six, two, three, one, four days. And I then had the idea of working, working out how much, uh, what would in the, the sanctuary service in the ancient Israel, in the tabernacle and in the temple, there was uh, so many days associated uh, in, in a particular year with that um, work in the, in the holy place. And then there was one day, which was the Day of Atonement, which would be associated with uh, Christ's work in the most holy place. And I used the prophetic 360 day years a uh, day year, and I um, put in that 359 days would typify uh, this here work of Christ in the in the holy place, and one day would then typify uh, Christ's work after this period. And to find out what one one of these days would represent. I divided this number uh, into this, and it came to 844 days, and then there was some remainder, and I, I associated the remainder, you could, there was some significance, I, I drew from that there, um, but I'm not going into the details of it in this overview, um, but just to, I'm just looking to point out November 9. So the one day then would represent 844 days, and so from October 22nd, 1844, if you add 1844 days, it comes to November 9th, 1849. 49, we associate with uh, the 490, uh, which we understand is like a, a symbol of a, an end of forgiveness. Um, Jesus says to Peter, forgive your brother, 70 times 7, and then you ha we have the, the 70 weeks, the end in AD 34, which was the time of like a close of probation for the ancient Israel, and then the message then went to the Gentiles. Um, so November the 9th, 1849, is uh, exactly, it's 140 years then to November 
to the 9th, 1989. Um, uh, we can see a 140 year period as well uh, in the, the history from when Manasseh was taken captive in 677 BC to 537 BC when Cyrus uh, was made king uh, of Medo Persia. And this was at the end of the 70 years captivity, which typifies the 1260 years when uh, the Christian church was in captivity, and, and which ended in 1798. And this is a, a time period, these 70 years, would Ellen White talks about this in Great, and then Patriarchs and Pro Prophets and Kings, page 714, where she ties the, the 70 years to, and the 1260 together. So this would be like a time of the end, and we know, understand for us as well, this is a time of the end. <clears throat> so I related then this here, uh, 9th of November, eight, and eight, in 1849, we can then correlate it then to our history, to November the 9th, 2019. From 677 BC to the 1844, uh, there's 1200, it's, it's, 20, it's, a 20, it's the second 2520 uh, of the times of the Gentiles, and what um, William Miller uh, also taught this here. This part of the, the chart we see, we see it in the 1843 chart and the 1844 chart, or sorry, 1850 chart. And so we add 1844 days there, Texas to the 9th of November, uh, 1849. And so this is typifying uh, the 126 uh, for the remnant for the Seventh day Adventist Church. And, and we begin that there from 1888 to 2014. So if we're going to do the same thing and add 1844 days, it would bring us to the 9th of November uh, 2019. Um, so it sort of signifies this would be like when Christ would uh, end his work in the, in the most holy place for uh, relating to the priests in a, a fractal sense, like a, a shut door. <clears throat> I'm saying that um, this here would represent uh, Christ ending his work in the most holy place, the, the Day of Atonement. <clears throat> and this here, typifying this, uh, 359 days comes to October 22nd. And then the one day in the most holy place would end November the 9th, 1849. And so this is comes at the end of a, the second 2520. And for us, the end of our 2520 in a sense, which is 126 years, or the second one, the first one ends in uh, 1989. It goes from 1863 to 1989. That's the first one, so this is the second one, which typifies this, from 1888 to 2014. So if we're going to do the same thing, um, and add 1844 days, it would bring us to the 9th of November 2019, so typifying when Christ would end uh, his work uh, in the most holy place for uh, in our time. But it's obviously we're, it's in a fractal sense, we're maybe we're applying it to, to the priests in the movement. Was the application that has been made of it? Does that answer? Is that a bit clearer? <clears throat> um, I also had some other studies which related the 9th of November as being a close of probation. Um, I, I recognise that from the 9th of November 2019 to the 25th of December 2021 uh, is 777 days and this parallels the fall of the Soviet Union from 1989 to 1991. Um, 9th of November, the 25th of December, uh, that 1991 was when the, the, the Soviet Union flag was lowered and the Russian Federation flag was raised at the Kremlin. <coughs> so I tied that there in with um, Lamech, who lived for 777 years 
And this is the only other period, and well, this is the only place in the Bible where we find the number 777. So if you plug in Lamech to these 777 uh, days, in a day for a year fashion, um, he would be born on the 9th of November 2019. And his father was Methuselah, and he lived, um, well, he was 187 years old when Lamech was born. And 187, I had, we had seen that in 1844 is the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So you have 187, uh, we can plug that, them 187 days into this period. And uh, this year, the 10th day of the seventh month, would then line up with the 9th of November, 2019, uh, giving out the symbol of the close of, this was like a shut door in the, in the Millerite history, so connecting 9th of November, 2019 to a shut door. I also then, um, taking this a bit further, um, I added Enoch, who was 65 when Methuselah was born. And if, if this is a 252-day period that would bring us to, the 9th, to November 2019. So this would, Methuselah, 187 days before uh, 9th of November is the 6th of May. So Enoch would be born on the 2nd of March. But you have a 65 period, 65 day period here, uh, which equates to Noah's 60, Enoch's 65 years. And I, I took that 65 year period, or day period, and plugged it into the, the 65 years, which we find in Isaiah uh, chapter 7, verse 8, uh, which uh, begins the sort of, there's 19 years before the 25, 20s begin, and there's a, it's a whole, it's, it's 65 years until Manasseh is uh, taken captive in 677 BC. So in connecting them, um, together lining them up, you would have the 187 then, if that was representing Enoch, the 187 would then represent uh, Methuselah to the birth of Lamech, um, 187 years from 677 takes us to the year 490, and 490 can be seen as a symbol of the end of forgiveness, uh, a shot, like a shut door like, as well, so that's a, like, another line. Um, we also, I also had another uh, kind of information come to me that could also suggest 2019 as being a shut door. It's 2,760 years from 742 um, to 2019. And, and from 457 BC, when the 2,300 days begin, or which years, we connect the day for a year, and which ends in 1844, which we connect with shut door. This 2,300 uh, years can also be wrote as 2,706, 20, sorry, 27,600 months. So it connects with these here, this here, 276 here, and you've got a 276 here. And so if, if, this, if, if there's a close of probation here, we can maybe see like a close of probation here in 2019. Is that? Okay. But we don't know. Nothing has really happened. We, there's lots of lines of evidence to pointing to the November the 9th as being like a shut door. Um, but we, we haven't had really an event to connect with it. So uh, we're in a position we're seeking the Lord as to what you know, as to what, uh, if we're on the right track or what something's wrong or, um, so I don't know if we're kind of in the dark there, would that be right concerning any event? There's definitely a separation that's taken place. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> okay, after that study, I then touched on the year uh, 1533 BC for the Exodus and 
uh, Brother Daniel asked, asked, inquired to me the other day um, his concern about how weighty evidence do we have to connect it, the year 1533 to, to, the, to the Passover and the Exodus. And um, he, he said that his Bible, the old Bible he's looking at, normally point to the year 1493, around, around that time period. And I just want to address that. Uh, I had connected the year 1533 BC to the glorious manifestation of the power of God. El Mike talks about in Great Controversy, page 611. From August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844, we have uh, 1,533 <coughs> days. And uh, El Mike talks about uh, uh, the Mount Sinai as being a manifestation of the power of God as well. So it kind of connects. And part of my 1844-day study, the, 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 the part that was left over, uh, the part of the day, the, uh, also had the, the the 15 minutes and 33 seconds connected with that there, uh, which we've seen. We you could go to the cross and it connects with Mark chapter 15 verse 33, um, where Christ is, is then takes you to the ninth hour. This relates to the ninth hour as well, so there was like a symbolism there. Uh, but to address the question that Daniel had concerning our weight of evidence we're putting on the year 1533. Um, one of the evidences I think is, uh, if you go to Exodus 16 verse 1, it will bring up the date, the 15th day of the second month. This would have to be a Sabbath because the following day the manna would fall on the 16th day of the second month. And that would fall then for six days and then the following Sabbath it wouldn't fall. And it would fall twice on the, on, the, on the Friday, on the sixth day. And if we were able now to use, um, with online, there's these here, um, moon calendars and so forth, we were able to see what, what way the moon would fall and how to calculate the dates and we find that in the year 1533 this, this indeed, the 15th day of the second month would indeed be a Sabbath but in the year uh, 1493 would, I think I looked it up, it was like a Monday so it doesn't really connect but there's another uh, reason why I think uh, the year 1533 is, is more favourable if we go if we go to Ezekiel and his prophecy of 390 days, he's predicting the siege in 587. And then 390 days back takes us to 977 when the kingdom was divided. And it talks about in the fourth year of Solomon, you find this in 1 Kings 6 verse 1, that um, Solomon, um, the temple has begun to, build, to be built the fourth year of Solomon, so you can go back then 36 years, because uh, Solomon reigned 40 years, so it's in his fourth year, so you have a 36 year time period here, it takes you to 1013 BC. And it says in 1 Kings 16, that from when they came out of Egypt to the building of this here temple, uh, there was 480 years. So this would take us, 480 years from 1013 would take us back to the year 1493, which would seem, if you're going to connect that with the, the Exodus as, as to when the, what the verse says, it seems to imply that as when they came out of Egypt, in that year it's 480 years until the building of the temple. The, if you do sort of the math of the, the, cal of the, the dates that the kings reigned and the dates that the judges reigned, you come to some problems if you're going to have this here as being the date of the Exodus. And what I would suggest is this is the date when they cross the, red, the, the River Jordan and enter into the Promised Land is what is referred to uh, most likely in the verse. Um, if you go back from 1013, there's, um, if you, you're going to have four years for Solomon 
and then 40 years for David and 40 years for Saul and so that's a total of 84 years so you would say then from the, if, if you're going to make this the Exodus from the Exodus to Saul you're going to have 396 years and then they had 40 years in the wilderness connected with this here and so from the, the you would say from the crossing of the River Jordan entering the promised land to King Saul would be 356 years and if, if you want to, could someone read Judges chapter 11 verse 26 and this is uh, talking about Jeff, Jephthah and he's speaking to Moab and he's relating to the time when Moab um, had their land taken from them by the Israelites and it, he equates it to being 300 years. Could someone read that? While Israel dwelt in Hezbon and her towns and in Eror and her towns and in all the cities that be along the coast of Arnon 300 years, why therefore did ye not recover the, them within that time? So Jephthah is 300, so there's 300 years from the time when they crossed the Jordan and took the land of Moab, uh, entered, so took some of their territory, and, um, and to, there's 300 years then to Jephthah, so that would leave from Jephthah to Saul, you take 300, 300 years from this here period, that leaves us 56 years. And so you have from Jephthah, uh, other judges you find, uh, from, from Jephthah you got these here, and if you add up to Samson, it's then 51 years would take you to Samson. Samson would judge Israel for 20 years. So that would be, like from Samson to Saul, would leave a period of just four years. And then you've also, in these four years, you've got to equate Eli, who judged Israel for 40 years, and you've got Samuel and his sons that will take you to Saul to fit into this history. And um, it becomes very condensed. Uh, there's, it's hard to work out as to how Eli connects to this here period as well. Uh, it probably would be too much. You'd have to sort of... But uh, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that you're, you're better having a longer uh, time span that this here, 480 years, takes you not to the Exodus, but you'd prefer to have another 40 years to, to sort of fit this here history in. And um, so this would, 1493 would equate to when the, to me it's more logical that, that the, this would be the time period where they enter um, the River Jordan, cross the Jordan and enter into Canaan. So I don't know if that helps, and yep. does that Somewhat. help? <laughs> <coughs> Okay, so that's me finished that, I've done that. Um, I should uh, go this one. So the, the next study I did, it was entitled uh, 777. <coughs> and so it was about the 777 days um, from the 9th of November 2019 to December the 25th, 2021. I had suggested that if, if this was uh, raffia. Uh, I had suggested this here would be uh, panium and also there would be, we rec I recognise that there was two events connected with panium. There was a, a strike of Islam where Balaam uh, is crippled by the ass which is Islam but there's also a victory for the king of the north against the king of the south and had suggested that there was, uh, in these here two events, there was a, this was a, a period of time, rather than happening at the same, the same day, there was some debate as to um, how these events occurred. It wasn't clear. So I, this was just something I, I done earlier on in the year and sort of put, suggested. <coughs> and when I did that there, I found that there's, um, from the 9th of November, 2019 to July 18, which we had lined up 
we've, uh, we've done a study that connected this year date with two, two periods of 381 years, and one with 15 days and one with uh, 180 years, which was half a year. So 2.5s, 1.5 a month, another 0.5 of a year. So there's 252 days to there, and then I found out there was 525 days to the December 25, 2021. So it's like a, like a, a reverse of this here. And, and each day here was a, a Sabbath. So you can also connect a, sal, a seven, a seven, and a seven here, and which connects with 777 days on any one calendar year. Um, the 9th of November to the 25th of December is 46 days, which we relate to 46 when it was the, uh, the Ten Commandments. You have Noah on Mount Sinai. He was up for six days and then for 40 days, then he entered the cloud. Moses. Sorry, what did I say? Noah or something? Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, Moses, thank you. I found it this year, date, the 25th of December. Um, is the 20th day of the ninth month. We find this here date on, in Ezra, chapter 10, verse 9. It's a time of great rain and there's a separation of, 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 of wives, of foreign wives, idolatry and so forth. Was, um, idolatrous wives, I think. So you, you can read that there in Ezra 10, 9. So it seems to me, maybe you see, associate them events to this way, Mark. And this pattern of uh, two, a, a seven-year period connected with a two and a five, uh, we, can, we can find that in other passages, uh, in another like, biblical history. Uh, and the history of the Christian church can be divided into two, uh, two periods of two fifty-twos and five two five-twos. There's from AD 34 to 538, it's 2 times 252, and then this is the 1260, which is 5 times 252, which ends in 1798. Uh, in the time of the famine, in Jos in, when Joseph was king in Egypt, or not king, but uh, uh, like a prime minister, had, having a, a lead position, a leader, um, there was a seven year period, and two of it. 2 times 252 is what? Two times two fifty two is five hundred and four. That takes us from five thirty four. No, from thirty four. Sorry, uh, from thirty four to five thirty eight, and this is when the twelve sixty began. And five times two fifty two is twelve sixty. Okay, so we're just lining up the twos and the fives, which connects to like a seven year or, or something representing seven seven years. And so, in the time of Joseph, there's two years, there's a, fa a famine when he meets Jacob and then the rest of that famine, uh, he's with his, his father and his brothers the remaining five years. And the seven last plagues, uh, could be, there's a study I looked at uh, by David Westbrook, I have to get them from the details again, but he connected the first two decrees, uh, sorry, the, fir the first two plagues and after the second plague, there's a death decree, and followed by there's the rest of the five plagues then, of the seven. <coughs> five of the seven last plagues then uh, occur after the death decree. We had, uh, in, when Tess was here, in her presentations about November the 9th, 2019, uh, a lot of her, um, probably her prime, number that she used was the number 273 and, uh, if I, I've, if I, and I sort of connected that there then to the November the 9th and then I connected the number 252 to July 18 being uh, 252 days from November the 9th and then if you do that 273 plus 252 equals 525 which would bring us to December the 25th 2021 so just the math just seemed to fit, and it was suggested this that, that message, the message that Tess gave was the message of the North, and then followed that with Theodore mainly presenting was the message of the East, 
<coughs> and if you do if you equate that there, that north plus east e equals, if you read in Daniel 11, verse 44, it shall trouble him and great fury, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy. And so if this was relating to, to the Sunday law, it would then relate to the period of persecution of the Sunday law time period. Um, I looked at the 25th of December in history, and in, eight, in AD 274, this was when the Temple of Saul Invictus was dedicated by the Roman Emperor Aurelian. And it's also the date in 496 AD when Clovis, who was a king of France, was baptized. And so we can connect the, uh, the Sunday Law time period as being uh, the end of the United States and the beginning of the Seventh Kingdom. And Clovis being king of France, you can connect to him as being typifying the United States, having like a death and then a resurrection uh, as the principal king of the, the, the Ten Kings of the Seventh Kingdom. And in 800 AD, on the 25th of December, Charlemagne was crowned by the Pope um, head of the Ro Holy Roman, head of the the King of the Holy Roman Empire, and um, we can maybe understand that the, the papacy, um, in, in some way, running the United States at that their time to be head of uh, like a Roman Empire and, and sort of in type being set up in the Sunday Law time period. And there was some. Um, query about my taking just 30 years uh, from 1991 on the 25th of December and applying it to this time period and um, one of the arguments I came back against that was that the time laying could be represented by a period of time from 1989 to 1991. We also associate the time of the end with the, with the birth of John the Baptist and the birth of Christ or with the birth of Aaron and the birth of Moses. So it's a period of time, and so if you go from 30 years from the time they end, if you're going to have that 1989 to 1981, sorry, we can justify then um, having um, 2021 also uh, being connected to, uh, um, to sort of as that was my justification for plugging in uh, 2021 because we were applying 30 years from 1989 to 2019, so this is my justification for applying it to 2021 as well. Yes? Just for your own knowledge, there's another December 25th that may speak to something. December 25th, 2014, Putin signed the military doctrine of the Russian Federation, and that, that law, that, what he signed is identifying how they use nuclear weapons in a crisis. What's the date? December 25th, 2014, seven years before 2021. Mm -hmm. <coughs> by, by Joseph and, uh, you need to use the mic, please. About Joseph and you, Jacob, can you uh, explain why it is there? What, what, what it symbolizes? The okay. Um, Can you explain what Joseph and Jacob symbolizes on the mm -hmm. line of the famine of Joseph? Mm -hmm. um, we could see this as being the joining of the two sticks. Um, normally we apply that to the Protestants and the, and the Seventh-day Adventists, but in a fractal sense we could see that if we're going to line up with July 18, we could maybe see that this is symbolizing the, the priests and the Levites being connected. And, um, Levites yes, and we have a death decree here. Uh, we're not maybe, I'm just, I've, I'm, I just sort of put it up there just to show that there was a pattern. As to what maybe we could have some, something of a, like a, a Sunday law or some, some other form of decree happening around this year time period, but uh, that was, you could suggest that, that this is showing that. Um, but I, I'm not particularly 
uh, firm and, and I'm just more recognizing the seven years divided by a two and a five. Okay, that was just my the emphasis. And I also had uh, recently seen that there's two verses which is, are exactly the same and that they point to the it says uh, um, in 2 Kings 25 verse 2 and in Jeremiah 5 52 verse 5 it says the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of Zedekiah and they're exactly the same exactly the same words in the Hebrew and uh, so the eleventh year of Zedekiah in 586 is, is the destruction of the of the temple and the city and we've equated that there to being at the end of the 391 which we've connected to July 18, 2020 we could also have maybe a, like a application for that being here as well. So anyway, I just thought it was interesting that the two five twos and the five two five connects with that. And the one thing that I'm sure you know, but you didn't say, if you take the two five two and the five two five and add them, then they go to seven seven seven. Yes. Which mm -hmm. is the history that you're illustrating. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> So after I had done that study in 777, I had done another uh, presentation and I entitled, entitled it the, the Jenga block that the builders have, re have rejected and tying it in with the stone that the builders have rejected that you find um, in 2 Peter chapter 2 and um, this was, the Jenga is like a, a game where you have all these here blocks put together and it, one, uh, somebody has to take out a block and then someone else takes out another block and the one who takes out a block and it all falls over is the loser. And uh, Tess had equated the Midnight Cry message that she gave here last year as being like a Jenga tower and she had accused FFA of taking out blocks that the whole structure is going to fall. You can't. It's a whole complete package. She was saying, and if you start taking out blocks, it's, it's just going to fall over, and it's it's not going to have any value. And my emphasis in this here presentation was not to try and take out any of her blocks, but but look at the block that she didn't have. There's a missing block in the the foundation. It's not just like a a small block, anything, but I believe it's. A, a prime block for the midnight cry message and yes and it's not part of their message at all and I had related to our studies we've we've looked at Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 and he begins on the fifth day of the fourth month which is July 21 which can we connect to midway and at midnight so it's uh, we, we can understand that Ezekiel is typifying Samuel Snow in 1844 so this is part of the, he's part of the midnight cry he's a prime uh, biblical uh, figure uh, in the Bible who is, who is typifying uh, Samuel Snow. There's probably no one else in the Bible more typifying Samuel Snow than Ezekiel. In chapter 4, he gives a prophecy of 390 days on lying on his left side and 40 days on his right side. And both these here, if he begins on the 21st of July, um, the 390 ends on the 15th of August and then he turns and looks back at this year date for another 40 days so they're, they're both pointing to the 15th of August which again relates to Samuel Snow in 1844 presenting in Exeter. We can also connect this here prophecy to uh, a prophecy of King Josiah which we find in 1 Kings chapter 12 and 13 where it references the 15th day of the 8th month which we can also equate to being like the 15th of August um, so this is like prime midnight cry real estate real estate to locate to if we're going to be part of the midnight cry then the world this is the passages 
that uh, have have such significance for us. You know, it's, it's, there's the language of it uh, is prime midnight cry language, but yet it's not part of their message. It's it's not there. They're building this here tower. Uh, these they're adding more messages, whatever, and it's uh, it's missing a prime block and. I'm suggesting that their tower is, is unstable and it's going to fall over. Uh, we also find the message of honey related to Ezekiel's message. And um, we find that in chapter 3. And we also have the name Josiah. We can connect that to Josiah Lech. We have a 391 years and half a month prophecy of Josiah Lech. And we can see this here, 391 extend, st extending to 391 and a half years. We tie them both together. In Revelation 10, 8 to 10, uh, this here message was honey to the Millerites. And so that relates to Ezekiel's message. He's, he's also eating a book, a scroll, which is honey, sweet to him. And Eurocliden Euro is like an east wind. So we can maybe parallel that with the 391 years and five, half a month of the uh, of the second woe. And at the end of it, they, they end up in Malta, and Malta also means honey. So I, I parallel this here, 391, with the storm, you're Clyden, and it's honey. And we have here in Acts 27, 27, midnight being mentioned, and the 14th night. And we understand that part of the midnight cry was on the 14th of August as well as on the 15th. So we have, I, I understand that they are, she attested, presented about Acts 27, and I, I do accept that the, that there is part of the midnight cry, but also but it has connections to Ezekiel 4 and to Josiah Lich. It's connecting all these here together, but it's not part of their message. They've, they've kind of, not only they just, didn't uh, re regard it. They just really fought against it. It was something that was a cornerstone that they stumbled over, that they, w they wanted to get rid of. And, and in Germany, this year teaching of Ezekiel 4 was basically dead, but it has been resurrected after the German camp meeting, and it's now being presented again today. In the history of the Paul in Acts 27, there's um, 20 fathoms measured, and then 15 fathoms measured. And this equates to, uh, in total, 25, 20 inches. And the 20 fathoms uh, relates to 1,440 1, inches, and 15 fathoms to 1,080 inches. And uh, I had, I, I worked out that this here, 1,080 inch, inches is the same uh, height as damage in Daniel 3. And uh, I had suggested this here was relating to the uh, 144,000 as the symbol. And the image of Daniel 3 is being set up uh, in this here history of this here storm of Eurotiden. And this is the, like, the image of the base being set up. And then it's, it's followed by the mark of the beast. So the image of the beast is set up bef uh, before the Sunday law hits, and then so this is re would relate to the midnight cry period uh, before the Sunday law. So you're seeing two classes of worshippers being developed over this truth. Yes. Yes. It's just like this is prime midnight cry material that the the. They're not there. They're they're not. That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Yeah. It's yes, it's uh, the height of damage in Daniel chapter three. It's fifteen fathoms, and uh, and fathom is also as it's um, it's seventy two inches, and it's um, it's from one tip the finger to the other so it represents a, a, like a cross uh, and like a, if you're going to measure it. So this is the last board work. So well, just 
And uh, I then um, done a presentation called Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And um, I, uh, in 2016, uh, after the, the camp meeting in Holland, um, Emma Byant related to me about the 6th uh, of August and the 9th of August in 1945. And we had understood previously that uh, from Matthew chapter 20, where the, the, there's a parable where workers go out into the vineyard, that uh, there's a morning time, a third hour, and then the sixth and the ninth hour are connected together. And then there's the eleventh hour, which we understand to be the eleventh hour workers. We, also, we, under, we have a name for these, we call them the nethanims. So I was... Um, so we were, we were looking at this here, the 6th hour and the ninth hour initially as being represented by uh, Raphia and Paneum. And that this would be like a strike of the King of the South against the King of the North. And this would be a, a return, a defeat for the King of the South by the King of the North. And um, this is the midnight, the midnight cry time period, we, this was implied, and initially we thought maybe it could be like a hot war, being connected with the 6th of August and the 9th of August, it would be some nuclear aspect, but then uh, was, we maybe were thinking that it was maybe more like a, a cyber war, is representing something like that there. But uh, the 9th of August, Raffias in a sense were, um, we're not really seeing any a nuclear attack or anything associated with Russia and the United States, uh, certainly at the moment. But there was this, then when we came to understand in uh, 2018, that uh, July 18, 2020, um, is representing a strike by Islam, um, I then uh, equated that there. Uh, we, we've, we found a connection with this here date, July 18, 2020, to, the, the, to this here date here, the 6th of August in Hiroshima. We found it on the 6th of August, 1945, the, um, was the 26th day of the fourth month, which connects to July 18 being the 26th day of the fourth month in the Gregorian calendar. And we also found it's 391 weeks, sorry, 3,910 weeks and five days from the 6th of August uh, 1945 to July 18, 2020. And this year we can take as a symbol of the 391.5, which, uh, which, was, which, was uh, which was a number which we used to, to come to this here date. So um, we be, I began to plug in this, this here Hiroshima attack to this here, uh, well not me, but others, uh, Theodore and Odilio, uh, began to plug in this here uh, event to July 18. So if this here is going to be the 6th hour, uh, represented by the 6th hour in Matthew chapter 20, um, my suggestion then would this, the 25th of December 2021 would represent the 9th hour, um, being the 9th of August when the Nagasaki was, uh, was bombed by a nuclear attack. And um, previous studies had showed that the, the third hour was 9-11. You had some logic where you, could you just go over that again, how you equate it? Well, arrival of the third angel's message, the combining of the three messages, that you have three mm -hmm. persons we put there, Christ, David, and Joseph, that are 30 years old, drop to zero, three, three, three. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So that was, um, that was uh, what I recently put in place in this year's study of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And then, so we, I was equating the 6th and the 9th to be in Panium, to be in uh, the Midnight Cry so as, a, as a period of time. And then come the 25th of December being like a Sunday law, 
where afterwards that would be like the close of probation for the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and then the Eleventh Hour workers would continue until Daniel stands up, or sorry, uh, uh, Daniel 12:1, or Michael stands up, and. Um, Is so, the only reason we moved Rafia back to November 9th because of Tess's presentations? You said that you initially thought the sixth hour was Rafia and the ninth hour was Paneum. That was initially taught when the studies began, began in 2016. But we moved them back based upon Tess's presentation. We moved Rafia back to November 9th. Is that what happened or don't you remember the logic? Because uh, June twenty second was Rafia and yeah, June twenty second was Rafia in the two thousand or two hundred and seventeen. Um, okay, I ask you a question you don't know. Sorry. Sorry. Do you do you have an answer to your own? No, I'm just wondering if maybe we need to relook at that again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Particularly if Russia and Islam mm -hmm. are allies, where they could both be there on the sixth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I also we find this here. Uh, Three six nine. Uh, if marked out in Mark, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-five and twenty. Uh, this is this should be thirty-three. <coughs> So we have a, three, a, a third hour, a sixth hour, and a ninth hour at the cross marked out. There was darkness in the land from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. In 1 Kings 18, we see that um, Elijah and the prophets of Baal meet. It starts off in the morning, but we can identify the, the, the noon being represented by the sixth hour when the prophets of Baal slash themselves and then the fire comes down. And on the ninth hour, which was the t this is the time of the evening sacrifice, and it doesn't specifically say the ninth hour, but we understand that the, the evening sacrifice was at this here time. So you, you have that these here three six nine, and and this here uh, identified in this here time period. And also worked out that that July eighteen, uh, twenty twenty is the twenty sixth day of the fourth month in the Gregorian calendar. But in the Julian, it's the tenth day of the fifth month, and if you add two six four and and, and one zero five, it equates to three six nine. <clears throat> so it's, we're, I'm finding quite a few a few three six nines connected with us here. Um, we also seen that uh, with the attacks in in Hiroshima and Nagasaki being in 1945, we equated them to the, the, the time period of the 45th president, 45 connecting that, and Trump is the fourth of five children. Uh, it connects us with Malachi 4 verse 5. It says, before the coming of the day of the Lord, he will send Elijah the prophet. So before the Sunday law and the Nephinims come in, that Elijah will be working here, and he, we find that Elijah was... Um, working in, from the, the sixth to the ninth hour, uh, he was mocking the the prophets of Baal in this year time period. Um, I looked at the the name meaning for Hiroshima. It means wide island, wide island, and Nagasaki means long cape. And I connected that wide island uh, being the six and nine being connected together. I connect the White Island and the Long Cape together, and it can give you the shape of a cross. And Potsdam, where there was a, a warning given to Japan, uh, on which they received on the 27th of July, 1945. 27th of July being represented as, as a, a symbol of Islam that we see um, connected with Josiah Litch's uh, prophecy. Uh, which ended on the 11th of August, 1840. Uh, so connecting this here time period with Islam. 
of the subject of Islam. Um, Potsdam means beneath the oaks, and we could su suggest that this was, is also uh, the oak, oak is a tree, and the cross is also like a tree. And uh, in a sense, this is a time period where we're beneath the cross. And uh, in Desire of Ages, chapter 45, I should have put Desire of Ages, chapter 45, up there as well. <coughs> she talks about um, the foreshadowing. The title of chapter 45 is called The Foreshadowing of the Cross. And Jesus is in Caesarea Philippi, which you understand to be Panium. So this is, this is a time period of Panium. And there's a shadow, uh, that they're in this here shadow, and it's taking us to the cross. And then if you continue on, it'll take you into the, the period of the sun, where there's no shadow, in the sense that this, the shadow, and the, you have the, we could talk about the shadow and reality, uh, the, 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 the type and the anti-type. This would be prefiguring the Sunday law. And then this, uh, after the cross, you're just, there's no shadow in the sense that the, you're in the, the Sunday law reality. <coughs> um, <coughs> so as a... Um, Japan uh, means what? So Japan means Nippon. It's in Jap Nippon is um, is the Japanese word for Japan, and it means the origin of the sun or the rising sun. And in Malachi four verse two, is we can c connect that there the name of Japan to the rising sun. Uh, where it says that the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his win wings. And so I had I further continued to study and relate it to Malachi chapter 4, to being representing this here time period. It talks about Elijah uh, in verse 5 as well. And it talks about something like a... It talks about the second advent, that the earth shall burn like an oven. And we related that to uh, like a what happened in Hiroshima as being like a, a foreshadowing of what's going to happen to the world at the second coming. But also we could also relate it to what's be, going to be happening in the, the midnight cry time period in Panium between the sixth and the ninth hour. <coughs> or at, <coughs> yeah. So I also connect it beneath the oaks to Rachel Oaks and that she was a, a messenger that brought the, the Sabbath uh, to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, or to the Adventist, she brought the issue of the Sabbath, uh, the Fourth Commandment. And uh, if we're beneath the oaks, it's, we're approaching the, the Sunday Law, which we relate to, to the, the, the Day of the Lord, which is the Sabbath time period. Um, so you're saying the light that casts the shadow of the cross is the light that came from Japan, the land of the rising sun. You're not saying that. I'm saying that, I guess, <laughs> by the look on your face. Yeah. <clears throat> you could have some... It, it's, it's, it's giving us... I believe that there's light from that history of Japan that is speaking to this history here uh, from July 18 to December 25th, and we're <coughs> connecting them events with the 6th and 9th hour, the 6th of, the 6th of August and 9th of August. Um, so that was kind of covers my presentation on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's like a brief overview of that. Also found that James White died on the 6th of August, 1881, on the 10th day of the 5th month. And uh, he was the leader of the church. You could sort of suggest that that was typifying the end of the church at, uh, on the 6th of August, typifying well, the 6th of August, and we have the 6th of August here, and it's also the, the 10th day of the 5th month, and is July 18, 2020. <clears throat> so I haven't, uh, just, I could put something together there. Another presentation I did was called Foreshadowing, where I had Ezekiel in 492, he was pointing to the 10th day of the 5th month in 586. But he is also pointing to the 10th day of the 5th month in AD 70. He references Jehoiachin. And Jehoiachin ruled for 
well, he, he was in prison for 36 years, and then, you know, and 36 is, um, if you add that up, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 36, going that way, it adds up to 666, and you have a 666 year period from when Jehoiachin was king, uh, for Iran just for three months, but if you go from there, 666 years, it takes us to AD 70. And this was the destruction of the, the Jerusalem, also on the 10th day of the 5th month, as, was, as, it, as it was in 586 BC. And there's a 36 year period here from AD 34. If you go back, um, so, uh, sorry, Elm White in this, this uh, great controversy, says this is typifying uh, the end of the world as well, what happens around <coughs> the time of the seven last plagues and also the Sunday law time period. So in the sense that Ezekiel is pointing to this date and also foreshadowing this date, uh, we are also, he could also be foreshadowing the end of the world. If you go back, if we had a, a 390 one year or 390 days taking us to the siege. Um, Ezekiel's doing that. If, we, if we're going to have 390 and plug it in behind AD 70, it'll take us to the year 321. And if we flip it to 321 AD, it'll take us to March 7th. Uh, it'll take us to the year when Constantine signed the Sunday Law. Um, Six-year period at the beginning and at the end of that, but what there there's going to be 36 years there. But what's significant about those 36 years? Uh, 36 is uh, there's a, a Babylonian square that has 36 numbers, and each number is uh, we add each number up, and it comes um, each. There's six rows, and each row adds up to 111, and there's six of them. So it's um, 36 is like a symbol of 666 as well. It was a Babylonian square. <coughs> and Je Jehoiachin was in captivity in Babylon for 36 years. And the other 36 on the end is identifying the time period from AD 34 when Stephen was stoned and the Lord in his mercy allowed another 36 years for the children and those that hadn't heard the message to come to the message. So you had a 36 years on the end and the beginning in a period of 666. Thank you. Um, so I'm saying that Ezekiel, he's pointing to the sage, but he's also pointing to the destruction of the city and the temple in 586. And although he doesn't know it, there's also connections he's pointing to AD 70 and to the end of the world. But he's also uh, pointing, I believe, to July 18, 2020, because he's, there's a 391 and a half year um, prediction there, uh, indirectly, and it connects with a 391 year period here, uh, which ends in 1840, which Josiah Litch had uh, calculated and he was himself, himself, Josiah Lech was foreshadowing another date. Um, I believe it can be shown that he was pointing to the, the end of the, the Ottoman Empire on the 11th of August, 1840. And uh, there was an event that occurred on that there date, but it wasn't the, exactly the end of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire did actually end in 1922, and the biblical date was the 11th day of the 8th month. So Josiah Lich was in a sense foreshadowing by pointing us to the 11th of August 1840. He was, uh, like, we can understand that he was also foreshadow being used to foreshadow this event as well. Um, so I, I also had... Um, lined up uh, 369 and 69 to um, B 
being followed by a 7 um, or a 70. Um, in August 15th, the Midnight Cry in, in 1844, Samuel Snow it, there's, uh, gives, gives his message at the extra camp meeting. It's 69 days then to October the 22nd, uh, 1844. And this is when the, the third angel came down and the, the Sabbath became a test. So I'm representing that the Sabbath by the number seven. So the sixth and ninth, I'm, I'm using that as a symbol of the midnight cry. As, as so I have the sixth hour to the ninth hour, the sixth of August to the ninth of August. And I'm plugging that in as a symbol, the sixth hour, the, the, the 69 days. So in Matthew 20, the sixth hour to the ninth hour is followed by the eleventh hour workers, which is the Sunday law time period. So I'm plugging in another, symbol, another seven there. 80, 69 was then followed by 8070 and the destruction of Jerusalem, which we tie into the we could tie into the the, the the Sunday law time period. And I'm just using this here like as a 69 as as a symbol for which precedes the Sunday law. And in the 69 weeks of the prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25, I believe. Um, there's uh, seven weeks and then 62 weeks, so that, which adds up to 69. It's followed by the 70th week, which is a seven-year period, uh, which, which began with Christ's baptism and ended with the stoning of Stephen. So the 70th week is, is, could be, is foreshadowing uh, the time when this year, 69, uh, ends, the midnight cry ends, and then the Sunday law begins and uh, Christ ministered here uh, uh, through himself and the disciples and ministered it was an internal work to the Jews and then afterwards it went to the Gentiles but uh, if Christ is representing the 144,000 that uh, they're developed then in the by the 69th week and then they do a, a work not internally but externally to the, the rest of the world uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, 144,000 then line up the, uh, the baptism of Christ. Uh, that's when they begin their work uh, to the, to the, to the Nephilims. And um, there's other things there, but it's maybe going to get too complicated. I don't really feel, maybe that would be, be an off overview for today. Uh, any other questions? Does that make sense? I thought they dropped the bombs the same day. They didn't? No. no. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah. They dropped the one and then three days later they dropped another? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, could you repeat again how, I know this is probably a very fundamental point, but how the 26th day of the fourth month is the same thing as July 18th, mm -hmm. 2020. The, um, the Julian calendar and the, cal the, the Gregorian calendar at the moment, there's like a 13 day difference. And um, the, the, the tenth day of the fifth month in July 2020 is on the Gregorian calendar. The, uh, the, uh, is the thir sorry, July thirty first, July thirty one, in the Gregorian calendar. In the biblical calendar, it's the tenth day of the fifth month. <clears throat> and uh, the Julian um, calendar. Um, it's, uh, it's 13 days behind. So uh, the, the Julian calendar then goes back to July 18. And uh, if, if the July 31st was the 10th day of the fifth month, it, uh, it says July 18 in the Julian, or sorry, in the Gregorian calendar, which lines up. Um, if you go back 13 days, that would be the, that's what I'm trying to think. I'll write it out here. Yeah. 
So July 31 is the 10th day, the 5th month in the biblical calendar. And if you go back, if this is the 18th of July, in the uh, this date in the Gregorian calendar, this date the Gregorian calendar to the biblical calendar is the 26th day of the fourth month. Could you write on there which calendar? I get mixed up on you know which calendar okay. you're talking about. Uh, could you write on there something? Of, you know, a J or G or something, on each of those? Yes. So, this is just our basic calendar that we understand today. This is the, the dates, okay? So this is Gregorian. Um, and Gregorian is the, is the calendar that we use, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. But it's 13 days different than the Julian. Yes. So if you take 13 days from July 31st, it takes you to July 18th. Uh, yeah, so there's a 13-day period here. On this year, date, 26th day, the fourth month, is the same date that Hiroshima was bombed. And it's a date that has been threaded through the first and second woes of uh, Revelation 9.15. So the 26th day of the fourth month is the Julian calendar? Biblical. This biblical is, calendar, yes. Yes, this is the biblical calendar date. Yeah. You should write July 18 above Ju July 31 with, with a, a J from Julian behind, behind it. Above, above July 31? Above right it, above it. You should write July 18 Julian. Put July 18th okay. right on top of it. Okay. And put a J by it. Okay. Um, and this is Gregorian. And so, um, you just subtract the yeah. 15 days, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if, if this was uh, July 18 Gregorian, if you're going to go then um, see how. So in the in the in the Julian then. Um, if that was going to be uh, July 18, mm -hmm. you be, be answered. This, this is the, the tenth in the Julian calendar. Then this is the tenth day of the fifth month. On the okay, if I if I can say it correctly, July 18th is the 26th day of the fourth month in the biblical yes. calendar. Yes. July 18th, yeah. Gregorian, is the 26th yeah. day of the fourth yeah. month in the biblical calendar. Yeah. 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 But it would be July... <coughs> All right. I'm if you type it, there's a calendar converter. We'll, we'll go into that and we'll show it up. Um, I'm not really um, very good at ex explaining, explaining it. We had to deal with so many calendars. <laughs> it's, 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 I get... Um, yeah, I haven't really explained it before. I have to get it into my mind as to how to explain it better. Um, so I can, I'm not, I don't feel, I'm like, can you do it? <laughs> in Odilio's presentations, he went over that well, that all that explanation is in mm -hmm. the, the July 18th study. Mm -hmm. So you, you probably ought to close. Also, one, one, one uh, go ahead. Use it, Mike. Uh, you said there, July 18 is the 26th day of the fourth month, and also 10th day of the fifth month. If you edit, you get 369. Yes. Connecting mm -hmm. July 18 with the 369 uh, application order. But also, if you multiply them, 264 and 105, you get uh, 277 or. July 27, mm -hmm. connecting it uh, with the symbol of Islam. So if you multiply 264 with 1005, yes. you get 227? Two 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 seven two seven seven. Yeah, 277 zero and a 2. Zero, 277, two zero. Yeah. Yeah, so you get 
27th of July. And a two behind it. Tuesday, okay. The two maybe could symbolize doubling. I mean, that's not quite simple. Uh, I just <sighs> wanted to add that. Uh, okay. Well, let's. Can you address uh, that in your studies, though, right? Yeah. Well, close with a prayer. <clears throat> mm. Um, dear Heavenly Father, with uh, stammering lips, Father, uh, I try to present this message and um, ask that, uh, that those who are watching, even though uh, my presentation style may not be very competent, Father, that they can um, have some understanding of what was being said, the seriousness of the, the message that we're presenting and the evidence behind it. And Father, that they can research these things and and um, be confirmed in them, if uh, if it is Your will, that uh, this is that this, of what we're understanding. Father, the evidence is, uh, I think, is, is typifying Samuel Snow and his presentation. We're looking at their history. We're saying that Samuel Snow had the message of "Behold, the bridegroom cometh," and that's what we're saying now. We're saying you're about to come. You're coming, and um, you're looking to take your bride, your church, to with, with you for eternity in heaven. And this is what all these numbers and dates are about. We're, tr we're trying to get to heaven. We're trying to, to be with you for eternity and to enjoy the blessedness of um, your eternal throne and your role and your creation throughout all eternity. Father, I just pray that... Uh, each one of us here bowed can be servants in preparing the world for your coming and that uh, we can give that message faithfully according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.